the European Union an open and free market. A market which is regulated and controlled to maintain balance. A role fulfilled by the European Commission. It monitors the development of the various sectors and analyzes the effect of commercial agreements on competition. It decides whether they should be banned or permitted. Most of these agreements meet with the approval of the Commission. However, the Commission also combats malpractice, which distorts competition. It implements procedures that safeguard the rights of companies to defend themselves in a spirit of fairness and objectivity. What is the purpose of the European Union's competition policy? In what areas does the Commission act to guarantee fair competition in Europe? The United Pharma Company, an American multinational, launches a revolutionary over-the-counter drug, a pill that allows smokers to kick the habit quickly. Four European companies follow suit and launch similar drugs. These products have only minor differences. They are advertised extensively for only 25 euros. The management of the five companies meet secretly and decide on a price increase of 25% per box as of the 1st of October 1998. This is followed by a further 25% increase at the start of the following year. David McClone was present that day in his capacity as Vice President of United Pharma. Well, as soon as we announced the price increase, a complaint started to flood in. We were suspected of having formed a cartel because there was no significant increase in the cost of raw materials or indeed any other cost that could uh, justify such a price increase. On the basis of economic activity analyses and complaints lodged by consumer associations, the Commission opens an investigation and asks for information. On receiving incomplete information from the companies, the Commissioner responsible for competition signs, in September 1999, a decision ordering the five companies to be submitted to an inspection of their business premises and documents. The inspectors of the Commission, accompanied by officials from national competition authorities, visit the headquarters of the five manufacturers. They all accept the inspection except for one. He is subsequently forced to accept the inspection on the basis of national legislation. The head of the investigation team finds evidence of the meeting of the directors of the five companies held on the 15th of September 1998. Uh, on the um, 1st of March 2000, the Commission sent me and all the other companies involved a document which described the objections expressed to our commercial behaviour. On the 15th of July 2000, and following access of non-confidential documents of the file, all the companies submitted their written reply to the objections expressed by the Commission. A hearing on the case is organized by the Commission on the 1st of September 2000 in Brussels. It's chaired by the hearing officer, a senior official that guarantees the rights of defense and independent of the team investigating the case. It's held in the presence of all parties involved, as well as third parties, representatives of the competition authorities and interested ministries of the member states as well as by other commission services concerned. the market for spring water. Food International, a large food group which manufactures and sells its products throughout the world, consolidated turnover over 28 billion euros.
Saucier is active in the production and distribution of bottled water. Consolidated turnover, over 2 billion euros. The springs used by the two companies are mainly located in one single country. There's only one other major operator on the market for bottled water, the Entreprise Alimentaire Réunie, EAR. The stock exchange has had a few jolts today with the announcement by Food International of their takeover bid for the Saucier Group. Under the terms of the bid, Food International would transfer certain brands of the Saucier Group to another mega group, EAR. This operation would give these two groups a dominant position in the spring water market. We've learned that Food International has informed the Commission of its intention and is waiting for the green light. In this notification, Food International shows that the operation doesn't result in the creation or reinforcement of a dominant position on the market. The Commission has a month to decide whether the operation will lead to problems. Within the framework of the investigation, questionnaires are sent to the parties and to the main competitors and customers. Interviews or on-site visits are organized. Following this one-month investigation, the Commission decides to carry out a more in-depth study of the market and the deal before announcing its final decision. The Commission expresses its objections to the operation, which is sent to the parties for comment. Following a consultation of the non-confidential part of the file and a hearing, a draft decision is prepared. It provides for a significant proportion of the springs of Food International to be sold off to a foreign operator. This will guarantee an effective competition on the market. The draft is examined by competition authorities of the member states during a meeting of the consultative committee. The committee adopts a favorable opinion. A large, state-owned chemical firm is suffering serious economic difficulties. The government is about to inject a significant amount of capital, mainly to avoid bankruptcy. What I can tell you is that the Commission European has demanded more precision on this transaction. And we have also remembered that, according to the treaty, all measures of debt must be notified before being applied. Voilà, c'est tout ce que je peux vous dire pour l'instant. Je vous remercie. The meeting which is taking place today between the Commissioner for Competition and the Minister of Industry follows several meetings which were held in March between national authorities and the representatives of the Commission. In view of the company's economic difficulties, the Commission considers that the injection of such a considerable amount of capital could not have been made by a private investor. Consequently, the Commission considers that the capital injection does in fact constitute government aid, capable of distorting competition within the community market. The discussions with the national authorities reveal that some of the capital has already been injected into the company without prior Commission notification or approval. The aid already paid will finance research and development activities. The Commission considers that this part of the aid may be accepted under the Community Framework for Aid to Research and Development. For the remaining aid, the Commission expresses serious doubts about its compatibility with the single market. In fact, this aid is simply aimed at keeping the company artificially alive 
to the detriment of its competitors. The Commissioner for Competition proposes to the Commission to approve the part relating to research and development on the grounds of its beneficial action on the competitiveness of the company vis-à-vis -vis its non-European competitors and because it stimulates innovation. On the other hand, the Commission decides to examine the other part of the aid while urging the government to suspend payments until the examination is over. The Commission explains publicly the reasons for the approval of a part of the aid and the opening of the procedure concerning the remainder. The decision is published in the official journal in the 11 community languages. Interested parties are invited, within a period of one month, to transmit their comments and remarks on this case to the Commission. C'est maintenant à la Commission de recevoir les différents commentaires des États membres du bénéficiaire de l'aide et des concurrents du bénéficiaire de l'aide. Après quoi, la Commission nous soumettra ces différents commentaires et euh, dans les prochains mois, nous discuterons ensemble des conditions sous lesquelles euh, l'aide à Global Chimie pourrait être approuvée. In the course of the procedure, the government submits to the Commission a restructuring plan for Global Chimie. The plan will enable the company to solve its economic problems and restore its long-term viability. In fact, the aid will be granted as part of the implementation of this restructuring plan. The Commission verifies that the restructuring plan has a good chance of success and that the company will not need further aid in the future, then approves the aid. The Commission, as the guardian of the treaties, has an obligation to ensure that public companies or state monopolies are also subject to the general competition rules that apply to the private sector. In order to offer a better service to the consumer and in close cooperation with the member states, the Commission has adopted during the last few years several directives aimed at liberalizing the telecommunications sector. This action was vital to prepare Europe for the information society. All member states have been obliged to grant a second license for GSM mobile telephony to private companies under the same conditions that apply to the publicly owned telecommunications operator. They are also obliged to liberalize satellite services, cable networks, internet access and mobile communications. Public voice telephony is also liberalized. Telecommunications costs have dropped dramatically and the choice of services on offer has greatly increased. The competitive structures of the market are maintained today thanks to the Commission's ongoing contacts with the OECD, the United States, Japan, Canada and many other countries in order to harmonize decisions. In the countries of Eastern Europe, 
the technical assistance provided by the European Union helps in the development of competition policy where a new market economy is being set up. Community competition policy is based on an accurate economic analysis of the market, backed up by the Commission's ongoing dialogue with industry and the member states. It safeguards the rights of companies to defend themselves in competition procedures implemented in a spirit of fairness and objectivity. Procedures designed to protect the consumer, employment, competitiveness and innovation within companies by constantly guaranteeing an economically sound environment.